Hello there. I haven't done a video like this in a while, but I found a rather provocative topic I feel is worthy of discussion. So to explore this point, I present the question. Are the Blood Angels rules too universally applicable? I suppose I should mention the intent of this video is not to throw shade at the Blood Angels. They are a chapter I'm quite fond of, and they score big points for being present to defend the throne world in its darkest hour. But in doing the research required for the 9th edition Blood Angel and Flesh Terrors thematic list builds, the issue became apparent. The crux of it is that for the Sons of Sanguinius, jump packs are not represented to the degree they should be. Sure, there are two stratagems, one to ignore charge modifiers and gain a plus one to hit in the turn a jump pack unit arrives from reserves, and another to remove and relocate a jump pack unit on your subsequent turn, along with a special issue war gear jump pack to reroll charge rolls and allow the bearer to fall back in charge. And that's about it, which when you think about it, is odd. It certainly doesn't seem emphasized enough. If you are unfamiliar with the Blood Angels, I invite you to consider this excerpt from page 42 of the Blood Angel supplement. All Blood Angels have an innate affinity for aerial combat. Though the mutation that produced Sanguinius's wings has never been repeated, the Primarch's heirs maintain a love of flight that is impossible for those who do not share their heritage to understand. To a Blood Angel, a jump pack is no simple machine or battlefield tool. It is an extension of their physical form, a manifestation of their spiritual bond between Primarch and Scion, and a reminder that even in death, his hand still guides the chapter. This is as true of Primaris Blood Angels as it is to any son of Sanguinius. So considering that, I can't help but come away with the judgement that jump packs are rather severely underrepresented. Surely something that is so closely tied to their identity should be supported in their subfaction rules. You know, the rules that are widespread, affecting multiple units on the table. The rules which are key in characterizing a faction's playstyle and mechanical identity. Which begs the question. How accessible should subfaction rules be? There is a philosophical divide on the subject of the universality of subfaction rules. And after much rumination, I take the position that no, subfaction rules should not be able to be widely leveraged by as many units as possible. Syndrome sums it up quite well. And when everyone's super, no one will be. It follows that if the rules that govern your thematic identity are accessible to their maximum degree by a wide array of unit types, then it will surely lack the thematic signatures that make that subfaction unique. Granted, there needs to be a balance struck, as you don't want your rules to be too specific. But when looking back to the Blood Angels subfaction rules, both the Red Thirst and the Savage Echoes Doctrine bonus are equally applicable to a wide variety of units. So then, the circumstances of these subfaction rules results in any unit that can fight with any weapon against any target will be able to take advantage of these abilities, which, while certainly useful, lacks any specificity to their thematic signature. It brings to mind the initial Salamander's rule set of 8th edition, when Warhammer Community awkwardly pointed out that the Salamander's chapter tactic is so universally useful you don't even need flame or melta weapons. That stated, I can appreciate the desire for a subfaction's rule to be widely useful. And luckily enough, the luxury afforded by the Space Marines having a doctrine bonus in addition to their subfaction rule brings with it the opportunity for some flavorful specificity, which happens to be well demonstrated by the current Salamander's subfaction rules. Their chapter tactic, forged in battle, like that of the Blood Angels, is able to be leveraged by a wide variety of units while representing a core characteristic of the chapter. But unlike the Blood Angels, the Salamander's Doctrine bonus enhances the performance of a very specific set of rules. Rules which are strongly tied to their identity. Could the Blood Angels' rules not benefit from some specificity as well? Would it not have been better for Savage Echoes to offer a perk that provides a benefit to jump pack units? You know, to showcase the Blood Angel's affinity for aerial combat, and reflect the strong thematic ties mentioned in the On Wings of Fire excerpt. And hell, similar to how they work currently, you could use Sanguinary Priests as the workaround for non-jump pack units to access that benefit. Thereby reflecting the Blood Angel's affinity for jump packs, while also maintaining a powerful ability that benefits the chapter. I don't know about you, but I can't help but find this approach to be more preferable. But tell me, what do you think? Are you for subfaction rules providing wide-reaching but shallow benefits? Or do you prefer your subfaction rules to offer narrow but deep benefits? 
These were my thoughts around the universality of subfaction rules, and it definitely does affect more factions than just the Blood Angels. So if you play Blood Angels, or any faction for that matter, I would be curious to know if you feel your thematic signatures are lacking representation. So, if you like this video, there's a like button. And if you want to help my channel grow, there is a subscribe button. There is also a share button and a bell button, so press the buttons you want to press. Thanks for watching, and I will hope to see you guys in the next one.